This morning is another time when I'm going to call you to do something. To give a give a response. Some of you will have to change your schedules in order for that to happen. And some of you might even have to take vacation time from work to make it happen. Some of you might have to, have to struggle with priorities in your life long enough to make room. Now, the one thing that God has given to each and every one of us, an equal amount of Now, let's think about this for a moment. You know, God did not give me the equal amount of talent that he gave Justin to sing. God didn't give me an equal amount of talent for some of those folks that, that are able to teach or, or do certain things. God gave me what I, what I needed in the portion that I needed. But you know the one thing that God has given to every one of us in the exact same amount is what? Time. Every one of you have 24 hours, 7 days. Every one of us do. I have it. You have it. We all have it equal. It's a matter of priority as to what we do with our time. This morning, you may want to take your Bible that you have with you and turn to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to be looking at those first two verses in great detail this morning, <clears throat> almost line by line. I want you to take that, and if you're a, a note taker or a jotter, there's a lot of great truths and principles right here in these two verses that we need to comprehend this morning. Paul begins by saying this, therefore, be imitators of God. And, and right off the bat, when you look at that verse of Scripture, you begin to, 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 to comprehend just that one statement. There's enough there that we can preach a series of sermons on what it means to be an imitator of God. And I'm not sure that we will ever get to the place where we'll understand what it means to imitate God. But I do know what it doesn't mean in short notice. This morning, I can give you a couple examples of what it does not mean. For example, it does not mean, it does not mean be all-powerful. Like God is all powerful. It doesn't mean that we don't look at the power of God and say, oh, I can imitate God's power. And therefore, I can be as powerful as God is. Uh, one of my favorite contemporary movies on that issue is, is the, the movie uh, Bruce, where Bruce Almighty, where Bruce Almighty wants the powers of God. He, he, he interacts with God, he talks to God, he, he sees God, and God says, take what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take all my powers and give them to you. Wow, don't you think that would have been a wonderful experience? To have the powers of God like that. All the things that I want in life would happen right like that. I mean, if I had the power to change the course of history, I would do it. If I had the power to cure cancer, I would do it. If I had the power to, to alleviate pain and suffering in the world, of course I would do it. If I had God's power, I would even. That had never hurt. See what happens when God's power becomes ours? It becomes abusive. And oftentimes God does not say to us, I want you to be powerful like I'm powerful. What he says is, imitate. The second thing that I know that it doesn't mean is that it means that I cannot be everywhere like God is everywhere. I can't do all things. I can't be in all places at all times. I don't have that ability. And I know that I don't have that ability. So, so when God says to me, imitate me, or when Paul says to me, imitate God, he's saying to us, you don't need to be everywhere at all times. You don't have to go far away to be an imitator of God. Too many of us are sitting right there today saying, I can't imitate God because I think God's purpose for my life is to be a poor missionary, and that's just never going to happen, so I'm not going to do anything at all. I can't be where I want to be. I can't be at the place that I think that I would like to be. And therefore, I can't accomplish being what God wants me to be, so I'll just do nothing at all. That's a cop out for us. The third thing that it means is that I'm not going to be all knowing like God is all knowing. These are some characteristics of God that, that belong to God. And when Paul says to us, be imitators of God, he's not saying to us, become God. He's not saying to us, become all powerful like God, become all, all, all knowing like God, be in all places like God. That's not what he's saying to us. What he's saying to us is, you use the example that God says and imitates that example. And do it in a very specific way. He goes back and says, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. We're to imitate God because we're a chip off the old block. He's our father and we're his children. Just, just as a, a son would mimic and imitate his father, we're to keep our eyes focused upon God the Father and realize that we have been created. 
created in his image and have the ability to imitate him. And have the ability to follow him. And have the ability to put characteristics in our life that are his characteristics. You remember the old commercial for smoking became such a bad thing that it began to try to, to change the minds of people about smoking. And one of my favorites is the, the father walking with his son out in the woods and they're having a wonderful time together. And the little boy is mimicking his father, walking in his footsteps. When dad would do something, he would do the exact same thing. And everybody out that commercial thinks, oh, isn't that cute? He's doing everything just like his dad. Until his daddy sits down and picks up a pack of cigarettes. And you see him, that little hand, reaching for the cigarettes. And then all of a sudden you say, ooh, that's not good. The example that we have in God the Father is a perfect example. It does not lead us wrong. It does not take us down the wrong path. If we as beloved children would see him as our beloved father, if we as beloved children would then realize that we have been created in his image and being created in his image, we reflect who he is to the world that's around us. Now, mind you what I, what I just said. We are not God. We don't become God. We become reflectors of God in our life to other people. We know God intimately because we are his children. And because we know God intimately, we reflect that into the world so that when people look at us, they see the characteristics of God in our lives. They see a sense of godliness about us. Not perfection. Not God. A sense of, I'm, I'm following. I'm making an attempt to be an imitator of my father. I, I may struggle with it at times. I may not get it right all the time. But I'm learning and I'm growing. And I've got my eyes focused on the one so that I can imitate. You know, it's, 